something here that we're buying from the Chinese right now. And the next best from that is to get other people from the other states to come to Conifer and spend the money. And the next best to that is get people from Denver to come up and spend the money. So we have this list of uh, maybe how to go about it, but Justin's been doing this. This is Justin. Justin. Rock, 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 of course. With uh, Miller Freshman. And he's a leasing agent for the center. So uh, we want Justin to tell us what we can do to help and what he expects. Um, so Justin, it's a uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. On the holiday weekend. Uh, I know you said someone from Denver was like four or five on the line from China and Brazil. <laughs> California, Denver, so I know on a holiday weekend all you get all you get is someone from Denver and I'm not gonna spend anyone. I'm just chatting with you guys. And I got some on camera here. So I'm nervous. Um, anyway, my name my name is Justin Brockman. There's a stack of cards over there. I put some brochures out, uh, more for uh, you to see and get feedback on than, than to actually be marketing to you. Um, I do not work for the owner of the shopping center. Um, I am hired by the owner of the shopping center to lease this center. I'm, I'm an employee. I'm a, thir I'm a third party service provider. Uh, my office is in Denver, which is, uh, which is good in a lot of ways where a lot of traditional retailers, um, and by retailers, I also mean restaurants, my, especially on the national and regional side, will open in Denver first. And then they'll come outside of 470 to, you know, the, the Evergreens, the Concords, and the Steamboats. So, uh, so, so the benefit is we get we can kind of we have a good pulse on who's expanding and who likes to be in power centers around the state. Um, the drawback is obviously the local knowledge that you guys have, and so I think if we can kind of pull the resources that I have and what I see in Denver with your local knowledge and kind of keep a dialogue, it can only um, it, it can it can only, it can only be uh, for the for the benefit of Conifer. Um, I've been working on this center. For only about four or five months, I'm sure you guys see when the, the, the signs changed. Um, and there just needed to be kind of a different different approach to the leasing. Um, that's what the owners out of Texas felt like. And so, obviously, as you guys know, whether you refinance your home or bought a home or maybe lease commercial space, everything seems to take longer than you wanted to. Um, so being only about four or five months in, we're, we're very happy with the activity we've had. Um, I don't have any new announcements of tenants to make uh, specifically, but we certainly kind of try to re reintroduce Conifer as a community in, the, in this shopping center um, to the retailers and restaurants uh, that we have relationships with. Uh, so, you know, centers, centers like this have, have an interesting growth cycle, um, especially now with the kind of post, post downturn, as you, as you guys have seen, um, like in you know, the city market on some levels. Uh, I'm sorry, the Safeway Center has, has, has struggled a little based on when it was built. And, uh, and a lot of these centers were built with the mindset that the landlord dictates the terms, if the tenant wants to lease it, they lease it at this price, that's the deal. And what the downturn really taught us is that nobody wins um, in that scenario. And there really needs to be a partnership. And not to get too technical, but there's um, if a tenant or retail restaurant, whoever is only doing X number in sales, they should only be paying X amount of rent. And that doesn't mean landlords only want jewelry stores and they can do the most sales or car dealerships. I mean, you need a mix to have a synergistic shopping center. You don't build all of this, um, all of this space thinking you're going to get maximum dollar on every space. You have to have different, different uses that draw traffic to. To, to all, all your retailers. I mean, you guys know a lot of community planning. It sounds like a brainstorm. You certainly realize that. So, um, on a center like this, um, I'll call it a, a grocery anchored center. So, you know, it's an anchored shopping center um, versus a lot of kind of the non anchored strip on 285. Usually, it, it attracts a different, a different tenant class. Um, a lot of a, a lot of tenants in one King Super Center. 
on the day of multiple occasions, we'll just choose on a consumer center, so grocery anchor centers, just like tenant center or Walmart or Target center, I like to be my Walmart Target. So, you know, as I'm driving through Colorado and other states, and I see tenants in grocery anchor centers, whether they're specifically tenants or just categories, um, those are kind of the, the I want to call it the low hanging fruit of the natural people that you know do well in the centers, uh, similar to this. Um, and so, you know, my, our, our goal uh, over the last few months has really been mostly kind of kind of in the front range and in Denver, really spreading the word that uh, that, that the incomes in Conifer are good. That though it's not a large city in comparison to other cities in the state, um, it's generally underserved. I, you know, I think you guys. I think there could be more, definitely more, more restaurants. I mean, and, and I don't think you need. You're talking about earlier, probably not more Mexican restaurants or some, you know, some, 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 some categories are saturated. But I definitely think some, some are not at all. And you know, like, like fast, even fast food and QSRs and fast casual like Qdoba's. I really think based on your population here and the incomes that. Uh, that you guys could, could have more. You might disagree again. I, I don't come here telling you guys what your, your community needs and has. I just can give you my observations of what I see. Um, I've heard that the chamber that restaurants can be um, welcomed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, 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 one, that one seems to be covered. But, and, you know, restaurants are one of the kind of uses, and like you were saying earlier, you know, how do you get people in the kind of that, that aren't? That, that don't just live around here, grocery shop, and have their daily needs serviced by Safeway and uh, King Supers. And, and restaurants have traditionally been a good way to, to recruit people. So, you know, my goal, my goal in being here, and I plan on a uh, not only joining if we haven't yet, but to uh, but to also kind of be a staple in, in you know in your dialogue and on your websites and in your social media. Um, it's just to spread awareness. You know, I can only talk to so many people. But you guys, you guys talk to people every day, all day. You're business owners, you have suppliers, you have customers. And if I'm going to take any message away, it's that I don't know what the reputation of this landlord maybe was in the past, or what people have experienced in the past in this center or not. We uh, we are definitely a partner, or want to be a partner with uh, with the tenants. And talk is cheap. There's only one way to prove it, and that's bringing someone to the table and them telling us what they need, whether it's a landlord to build out the interior space for them or whether they need some free rent so they can focus on marketing efforts instead of paying rent during their first year. Um, all of those things are creative approaches, kind of post downturn that we all need to take um, in this ongoing partnership with landlords and tenants. And so I just wanted you to see my face and get my card and know my name and that I'm, I'm happy the one that you or any of your associates, family, customers, would be dealing with. Um, I'm 30 minutes. I'm 30 minutes away. I don't mind. I'm in Lowry, uh, so I'm kind of, you know six in Quebec, kind of. If you guys are familiar, and uh, you know about 30, about 30 minutes away. I could probably be here in 20 if, uh, without traffic. If you have a, if you have a good lead, I'm a, I'm 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 willing to. I'm willing to speed for a good lead. Like when I leave here, I have to pick up my parents at the airport. I might drive a little slower. Oh. I, might, I, might drive a little, I might drive a little slower, but for for, for a good lead in center, I, I promise I can be. Uh, I'm only one call away. I can be here quickly. So how much how much uh, how, how power of the persuasion you have with these owners? Like you're talking really. Seems like really good deals, uh -huh. some possibilities. Uh -huh. But I know they've already lost some tenants on the real estate if they've got some deals. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. And we, and we were addressing that before you came. And, and quite frankly, I've, I've only been around for four, four, about four months on this center. I find that hard to believe in today's environment, no matter what you've seen before, that they're willing to lose deals. Again, talk is cheap, and you when you bring, bring us a deal, and we'll, we'll see. But we have, they rely on us to give them the market information. They're in Texas, and they rely on us to tell us what we think the market is. Because no one, at this point, no one cares how much it costs to build a building, or how much the land costs, or how much the, the nice siding costs. All that matters is what someone can afford to pay. If someone's paying too much and they leave it a month, it doesn't help anybody. And maybe if, 
maybe that's one of the, the few silver linings we take out of kind of the last few years in the downturn. That you, know, you tell someone what they need to pay, and you get them to do it, and it's not good for anybody, and then you have vacancies. Justin, what, what categories are the most likely to be successful in, and where are you getting the most evidence? Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll um, try to answer that the best I can. Number one, value-oriented shopping, value-oriented um, retailers are, are, are very good. For example, you don't have one in Conifer, but anyone from Dollar Tree to Big Lots to kind of users like that, um, it used to not be cool um, to shop to, to shop at a value-oriented um, retailer. Now you see um, Neiman Marcus going to the same shopping center as Target. And you know you see things you've never seen before around the country that trickle down um, from the biggest cities to the smallest communities. And with that value theme, I also think you see um, more restaurants um, like the uh, the fast casual ones. It's very hard to go build a freestanding restaurant right now because of the hurdles those guys have to make um, to justify building ground up. So a lot of the a lot of restaurant chains are not kind of going more in line. Um, and, and they have programs to do that, whether it's Panera or even Burger, Burger King as an inline concept, and I mean, all, the, the whole spectrum. So the barriers of entry have really changed. Um, and more specifically, in grocery anchor centers like this one, you see, you see a nice mix of not only traditional retailers, but more service, um, you know, service providers, dentists, and dry cleaners. The logic there is that grocery stores are the ultimate daily needs kind of mousetrap that, that people go to the grocery store probably more than anywhere else and that's why dry cleaners and liquor stores and dentists, you know, they like to go where mom, where mom is visiting weekly or, or a couple times a week. Do you have specifics on uh, any, any uh, negotiations that have happened, like for instance, someone up there, is there any limitations on any other type of restaurant that's close to them that they say, no, we can't have that because we're just fine? Uh, yeah, you know, there, there, there's two kind of forms of limitations. There's one um, that is, I'll call it a, a legal limitation that goes into Sonic or whoever's lease. That's like you cannot lease to McDonald's in the shopping center within 100 feet of me or whatever is negotiated. Um, and then there's what I'll call just responsible landlord restrictions where maybe we can maybe you order this, maybe a Mexican restaurant wants to come and lease there. And it doesn't matter what they're going to pay. The landlord is a responsible owner with it. No, that's no good to me. One of you is just going to leave, and I'm back to square one. So I think those are kind of the two restrictions you see. Um, every landlord is different um, on their appetite of what restrictions they give, both on the responsible format, but also on what they're willing to negotiate. Uh, you know, for example, King Supers has restrictions over this whole shopping center where we wouldn't be able to do a Dollar Tree or a Vitamin Cottage or someone else that serves in excess of by $1,000 uh, food to be consumed off premise. You know, they have all, all this cute language to, to restrict people. And so what that ends up doing is it, they, they get the job done. They restrict people and then you have vacancy. And then, they're, and, the, and, the, and then you lose synergy in the center. So um, that's something we've had to dealt with some existing restrictions. Has um, Safeway done that or are they, are they loosening up on that? You know, I would assume that Safeway also has restrictions um, because no, none of these developments happen without the anchor tenant. And so the anchor tenant day one has so much leverage that says, I'm only going to go here if you abide by X, X, and X rule. But they haven't given you that information for you to... Um, I know King Super's restrictions in this center. I don't know. I, I, I don't know the same way side. Um, if you had a specific question, there's a specific user you've heard about. Maybe I've heard on. I've heard an anecdote or more, something I'd be happy to share with you. I'm an open book. Um, so. Are so, there restrictions for the Ravens, the former Ravens location? Um, like for different if you're just looking for a restaurant, yeah, it's probably right. not Chinese or Mexican. Right, right. <laughs> there's real, uh, other than that, there's really no specific restrictions. And that and that's kind of a game changer in what restaurants like now, is they don't want to go to the bank and borrow $100 a foot to build out the restaurant. They want to go into a restaurant that's already built out. And, and that way, they can kind of pay more of a market rent 
and they don't have to spend so much upfront money, which it seems to be the hardest part of a small business owner is kind of raising that upfront money. So I'm actually a little surprised Ravens has at least already. Uh, but we do, you know, I, I, had, I had a site, I had a tour right before this meeting. We have another one tomorrow. So I do expect um, it, it to go. Um, one of the things that I continually hear both in this center as well as the Safeway Center, um, and I know you're familiar with this location, is the water and the cost and the overhead associated with, with that. Can you speak a little bit to how much that is in terms of some operating costs in addition to just your price per square foot in terms um, of your general? Absolutely. And you, and you might be able to answer this. I know you can answer this better than I can, but I think the, the water is more expensive. I don't know how much more by a line item than it is typically um, in other shopping centers. But I also think that there's a big difference between when you build a new building and you have to tap into a water line and you have big costs and everyone says it's so expensive to get water. And I think that that translates into thinking that every operator, every user has this crazy expensive water bill, um, which I think they're different. I think a lot of people put it all in the same category and they can't and they're not in the same category. Just like running power into a restaurant like this is cheaper than if you have a freestanding building out and just put your own transformer in. And so I can't answer the specifics on the water. Maybe I can phone a friend here who, who might be able to, but I've, I've heard complaints. It's never been a deterrent that a deal's gotten in my level and someone's literally backed out because of the water expense. Um, well, I think, the, I think the concern is is that that's one of those things, particularly as a new business owner, you go in and it's a little bit of an unknown and maybe a little bit of a shock, I think, to some of the tenants that have given it a go. And then that's one of the things I think, unfortunately, has led to some of the businesses going under because of that overhead cost. Okay. That's something I should be prepared to answer. You know, dig into it. And I think that, like I said, the landlord says he's creative, and if that's a concern to a tenant day one, then that should be addressed day one. And, you know, as, as a tenant, you care about your occupancy cost. Whether it's rent, whether it's triple net, whether it's utilities, you only have X sales, and you want to pay X amount. And if water is that much more expensive, then that needs to be brought into the negotiation along with rent and, well, and, and triple net. And Billy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the perception, whether it is exorbitant or not, I think the perception is that the water in these two centers is excessive. Is it just water or is it water and septic? Uh, I just call it water, but okay. hold that. Coming, coming and going. Water is twice as expensive here as it is down here. Does it sound good? It is. Yeah. And they can't, they're not making money on it. You know, there are allocated uses for the water and there are allocated costs to maintain it. It's, it's just a whole lot more expensive. Right. So, 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 based, so, so drawing on his experience, double the price is very expensive. Double the price is, al is always expensive. I mean, but to a restaurant versus a traditional retailer, they have one bathroom or something. It's obviously going to be a lot different. For a bank, I, you know, it depends on the user, right? For a bank, right. it's not going to be much of anything. Right. So a restaurant is going to kill you. Yeah. And it did choice. Well, I mean, but you, I mean, what I pay in water for no more than we use seems excessive. Take showers at home. Right. <laughs> where are you? Where Where is your business? I manage the first phase. Okay. 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 Um, so the other question I have is, as it pertains to the water, where does the center sit in, re in regards to the wastewater treatment facility and the, I guess dumping into the river? Yeah, I I, I cannot answer that right now. I uh, I apologize, but that. The property manager and the owner really, 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 really better for us to answer those questions. Is that an answer you could get for us by chance? Yeah, I, I, I do have, hear that. Yeah, absolutely. I do hear that in my seat. I don't know how many other people would, but um, we would appreciate that. Thank you. And just generally, what what is the status of the wastewater again? Okay. Yes, please. But you know, I'd like to know that too. Okay. You guys are sending. You guys are sending me, sending me back, sending me back with homework. Right. <laughs> homework's good. Homework's good, right? Hey, that's homework. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> um, what would be the pluses and minuses, say, of getting just a temporary business in, like a holiday theme focused business? Uh-huh. Would, would that be something you would be interested in, or you would go after, um, or is it not cost effective? Probably wouldn't go after it. Okay. Um, if we thought it could benefit the center, um, it's certainly something we would we would talk to. Now there's a there's a philosophical argument in our business that should should people be able to open up kind of pop up shops just during the busy times, um, and wh- where it's the people in the center who are here, not only November and December on the good times, but they're here January and February paying their rent. Is it fair to put a, a shop in just as temporary? Um, you know, you see it a lot with Halloween. Um, you know, is it fair to put a, a Halloween store in the same shopping center as Party City, where Party City is paying you rent for 12 months, and 40% of their revenue might be Halloween? Um, I don't think that's right. You know, I don't, there's, not a, there's not a dollar amount. I think that makes that okay when someone's committed you for the down months, um, the good or the bad. However, there are exceptions to that, and some pop-up retailers definitely drive traffic to centers. You know, like you see calendar places, like you know, in, in January and February. You know, I don't think that hurts anyone in January, February. I don't, I, you know, I don't think you're taking anyone's calendar business in, in, in Conifer. Um, and, and, and you see some other things that, you know, maybe maybe, maybe the high school has something around uh, around homecoming where they're, you know, with the school selling stuff and they want to be in, in the center where King Supers is versus just in the basement of the school. So yeah, I think there's, you know, of course, it's not a yes no, but with that explanation, I think you could. See. Notwithstanding, some landlords would say every plus dollar to the to the income is positive, and we don't care, and and, uh, and we would put temporaries wherever they would go. I, I don't feel like that. Well, it looks to me like that even if you've got a temporary business in there, it's bringing business into the surrounding businesses. Uh, it's not just coming into that that two or three month business and right. be there. Uh, if it's something. Something that's not really competing. Yeah. I mean, we got Santa Claus or Easter right. Bunny or whatever right. sitting out there. Right. But if a lot of people are going to be coming into whatever the school is putting on there or right. whatever is focused around right. kids or getting their pictures taken, those parents are going to stop and shop at the other stores too. Right. 99% of them buy something from the other store. Doesn't that make a little more sense than having an empty I, I, I absolutely think it does. No, no question. And, it's, and, and a side benefit to that is a lot of temporary stores are become incubators for someone that sure. you know they learned something they, they they learned what worked and what didn't, and then they're willing to commit long term after they've already had a, had a proven business plan. Um, versus a lot of people who have to go through those growing pains their first year paying paying rent, paying for rent. So. We, and to, to, to summarize and answer your question, if there's anyone has a temporary store or knows of someone that has a temporary store, I'd love to talk to you about it and present it to the owner and, and, and give you my thoughts on it. Justin, do you have any evidence from the Department of Revenue that Answer is the short answer is no. Right. Now, I will. There's. Do you get any like Does medical marijuana count as primary job? <laughs> <laughs> because that's a very active yeah, what about use, it? right? Very active. But not in Jeffco Park, but not here. Yeah, and, and the, the, the answer is right now no. But I mean, I did see today that unemployment is now probably dip below 8% in Colorado. And so it's only a matter of time before those jobs. Uh, kind of matriculate outside of the cities and in other communities, I think. But but to, to, to straight up answer your question, no no nibbles in that regard right now. We do have some professional office space in the center. Um, as you guys know, like where Remax is, 
um, on the, sec the second floor, which we think is probably better used for office, for quasi retail, for services than it is for uh, traditional retail where you want to get parking and more visibility. But again, please, you know, that we, we handle that too on behalf of the owner, so if you know of anybody. Um, Sorry, you say, um, so two things um, I am asked about. One is, um, is there an executive suite to rent? And, you know, that's, you know, basically someone, so this is my wish list, I guess, for your owners. Um, executive suites, and then um, secondly, um, a space that can hold more than 100 people. If you, like, there, um, we have such limited venues, so this would be a wish list after you fill your center and you're gonna build something else. Um, we basically, almost, we have to go out of Conifer for anywhere over 100 people. Like for all my events, there is, you know, Evergreen or, you know, Morrison, Red Rocks Country Club or something because we just don't have a venue um, in, indoors. Yeah. Outdoors, we're pretty okay. But just, just a wish list item. Yeah. Well, event centers and places like that, meeting places, yeah. where you meeting places, have exactly. people meet with dinners. Bigger crowds that they need. It's very difficult to find anywhere. I've been involved in that a long time, but it's very difficult in the entire area of to find anywhere like that. Anywhere at all that will hold, you know, and when you do, they're books all, all the time. The, you can't get in. I don't know if this matters, but the Victorian building, you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, they I are considering, seen. they will entertain. One night venues. Okay. 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 Under controlled circumstances, yeah. much like yeah. our last meeting. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, they will entertain that. And that, you know, if you go upstairs, you can fit even more in there, right? So I don't know if that yeah. it's good to works, know. but it's just good to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the wish list, though. I'm okay, yeah. It's on the wish list. Yeah. With other bedroom communities around the country, uh, I would think that. They maybe battle some of the same problems that we have. Just that you've got people that live up here, they're commuting, they're working down in Denver, they live up here, and we can talk and people can say, yeah, we'd like more restaurants. But the fact is, we've had a lot of restaurants and they go under. Uh -huh. Because at the end of the day, we all like to say, hey, we're going to go frequent those places, but they don't get enough business. And, and so, what across the country, if you know, do other communities like ours, what have they done to try to make it a little healthier for those smaller retail okay. uh, You know, a lot of uh, a lot of those restaurants that you mentioned. Again, I I don't have the the historical depth of you guys uh, being from here, but a lot of those restaurants it becomes an issue of the occupancy costs that I mentioned below, and that they don't need to do the amount of sales that maybe they would have needed to do, as you know, in the banking business, if the landlord wasn't saying the rent needs to be X. And that is something that kind of happens behind house. You know, it's not only, you, there's only so many people that live in Conifer. I mean, you're only gonna do X sales, you just stated it. You're only gonna do X sales in, in Conifer, most likely, as you've seen it. So, Going in, the tenant and the landlord need to understand, based on those sales, what the rent could be. And I think when when that's addressed day one versus kind of retroactively in the case of emergency when it's too late, it gives, it gives retailers staying power. Um, because other than more people coming to the town, right? There's always so many seats that that makes sense at dinner time. Um, so I, it's really the recognition of that. There's no. You know, you can bring in different concepts that don't compete with each other or bring in more national brands, but there's always so many seats every night for dinner. Um, and, and, and that's what we face, you know, kind of the, the recognition that landlords and tenants need to be partners. That's what I see around the country. So you've mentioned that the landlord is wanting to be flexible with attracting tenants and whatnot. Do they have a plan? Have they talked to existing tenants? about renegotiating leases, how are they going to handle that situation because if they cut somebody a sweetheart deal, the tenants are going to talk. Right. Yeah. So what's their game plan when that happens? Um, it, it'll be deal specific, 
And again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the landlord, I don't handle the renewals, but it will be deal specific. And you know, when you sign most leases here in five years, you know, first bank one is longer, but that's the beauty of it. A, a tenant has the option of after five years, I mean, the, way, the tenant's not going to the landlord. So the landlord is going to have to talk to the existing tenants um, about that in, in, in any center. And what, whether they address it or not um, to the tenant's needs. It has to be addressed, and the tenant, the tenant can always vacate, like you see. I mean, you've seen tenants leave here and go to other centers, and you've seen tenants from other centers come here, and it's, it's, it's really case-specific. Is there an option to do shorter leases? Yes. Okay. Um, the shorter leases, the hardest part about a shorter lease is that, if, for example, if you wanted to go into one of the vacancies that was not built out, the cost to build that out is so expensive, it's hard to... It's hard to amortize those costs over one or two years. You, in other words, the rent is just going to that, and you're never, no landlord's never really any rent. Um, so that's that, that's really the challenge. If you take a space that's already been built out, um, it makes it much easier to do a shorter term lease. And so that's kind of what well, when, when I talk to tenants, I can only do probably a minimum of a three-year lease, okay. actually the maximum of a three-year lease. I usually kind of steer them to a space that's already been built out, so that's upfront cost. And if the space doesn't build out, what limitations do they put on uh, who can do the build out? Does it have to be controlled by the landlord or can it be done by the tenant? It can be done by the tenant. Um, the, land, you know, the, land, the landlord might want to know who the contractor is. Um, maybe they've had a bad experience with that contractor in the past. Um, you know, for like a roofer, they want to prove the roofer, so if someone doesn't come and puncture the roof, and then you move. It has to be permitted, it has to be done to Yeah, obviously. But, 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 other, but other than that, other than that the, the build out is definitely not a profit center for the landlord. They're not. And quite frankly, when, you, and when I deal with, it's a little different in Denver, but up here, the landlord's in Texas, I'm in Denver. You should, I mean, it makes more sense for you to manage the construction. You, you're, you're up here. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you pay for it, but it just means that you kind of use who you want to use because you're the one who ultimately, or the tenant that ultimately lives in the space, not the landlord of it, from, you know, from 8 to 5 p.m. every day. What is the actual vacancy of the center? Um, I don't have a specific number for you, but I'll tell you, usually vacancy is for space 10,000 square feet and below. So when you take Big R and King Supers out of the equation, um, it's probably at you know probably at that 50 to 60 percent range. Now if you incorporate those guys, it, it skyrockets up, but that's not really fair to do it that way. I, I don't I don't do it that way. I say there's a shopping center occupancy and then a small shop occupancy, so 10 below 10,000 feet. And I, I, I could add it up with my site plan or rent roll, but I don't I don't know. When I last looked at it, it was 80 with the anchors, and it was 50 and change without the anchors, which is precisely what you said. So, have you implemented any shop opening campaigns for um, center anywhere else that um, would love to help the market? My Our goal is to fill the center, so yeah. how can we help you do that? Right. Um, I would say to help us do that, it would be kind of spreading the word. For example, now I'm here, now you know me. And if someone comes and says, those guys are crazy, the water's too expensive, or they didn't work with my associate on his rent, just give me a chance to meet with them and give me a chance to tell their set of the story to the landlord. Um, I get a few strikes before, before you don't think I'm, I'm being honest. I, you, I, you, guys, you guys owe me the, the opportunity to do that a few times. Um, and, and I think I think you'd be impressed, maybe, you, even though it is the same landlord, but I, I believe times have changed and they recognize that. Um, and then as far as what else you guys can do for us on the spread of the word is, you know, you say like shop locally and, and I know you're doing, I think you said you had nine different events. I mean, if there's anything in these events that we can help sponsor or, 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 or anything, please, please let us know. Um, and I will insist that the landlord participates on some level. You know, I don't think to hire some third party firm to come do a shop locally campaign when you guys are very active in your community here. But if we can help pay for it, um, or you know, pay for it financially, or with what a manpower, I love whatever. That we've got that on tape, Justin. No, I, 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 I can say I can say anything that I want because I said in my introduction that I'm not the landlord. <laughs> no, um, no, but I mean, no, but I mean, I will. Yeah, that, we, do, you, we do have support from other shopping centers, right. especially we've not from this one. Okay. So I'd love to change that. Okay. Give you a try. And, okay. Thank um, you. 
and vice versa, you know, let us know if like, you know, we're able to market on your behalf and get those people here yeah, and great. those numbers. I'd love to be an advocate on your behalf. That's great. And to go with that, um, when we have events up here, being able to advertise for them, say with the banners that people can put up on the road, so that means we can't put them right on the highway or CDOT takes them. Being able to put them at shopping centers is huge. So what's your policy on that? Um, twofold. Number one is that the anchor tenants, like we talked about earlier, do have some restrictions. They don't want flyers on every one of them. They don't want a King Super doesn't want a flyer on all their shopping carts. That then people throw off and it's in the parking lot. So there are some general restrictions on that. Um, and that's not up to you to know those. It's more if you guys have some banner or some kind of marketing material that is professionally prepared and tastefully installed, put up, whatever, um, the property manager would handle that and give you a signed approval. And I don't know if you've been rejected in the past for that. You guys um, have actually been switching really wonderful. Okay. Yep. So let's continue. Let's continue the, on that positive and. And you know, there's more cars are coming in and out of the center than by any other address in your town. So if you're, you know, if you're, if your blood, sweat, and tears are buying these programs, let's kind of let's, let's be partners and align and you know maximize the visibility that we do have. Do you have a way of accessing like a list of what can't be put in here uh, so that we can, like, because I've got people that. Be interested, but I need to know if it's even worth them pursuing it. Yeah, um, I could probably. It's typically done by an exhibit to a lease that has specific language from the previous lease, like King Super's lease. However, I could probably take that list and just send some bold, very general bullet points of what's absolutely not allowed. Um, actually, <laughs> okay, right. You know, you don't, right? You don't, yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, for example, um, Adult bookstores, marijuana, that would not be allowed. But I can say that through a bullet point, you don't need to see the language in English. Um, I'd be happy to provide that to you. Um, on another wish list, I would love to have um, a Facebook page for you partner with Jason and expand Global 6. Um, you cannot get in that restaurant um, after 6 o'clock because it's packed. So you have to do takeout. And I know that you would love um, you know, to expand and then have a liquor license. Um, so uh, he's, he, he just knocks out of the park and, okay. it's, and it's the best Chinese food. And um, yeah, and I know that he, I, he does have a desire to expand. And, um, and I, I don't know if you talked with him specifically about that or not. Okay, I have not, I will. Yeah. But you have to get there to five. You basically, yeah. Because yeah, I think he has what, two, like eight tables? Eight, I think so. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's not enough. It's no. not enough. It's no. packed all the time, yeah. That's great, great feedback. Thank you. And that, you know, that's something you guys living here and this being your go to center or one of your go to centers that, that I might not know. So I really appreciate that feedback. And also, if um, just keeping the communication open when you do have something here, um, I didn't hear it till late in the game about the car show, and I'd love to be able to advertise that on your behalf as well. I know it costs, you know, just on the chamber website and that type of thing too. So there's a way to. Okay. Um, and then what I can do is kick it out to the other, like you know, um, the 285 and that type of thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, th I, I think that just by us kind of making an effort to communicate that more and for maybe us being more present at events like this where we just see each other a couple times a year or every month or whatever that the, the, those kind of, that kind of ideal flow will kind of naturally take but it, it starts with kind of making the effort to do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming here tonight. So I have asked way too many questions. Anyone else? Yes, Nico? What, is what happens if, um, like in Rookie what happens if do you guys like do like pick up like you know if like restaurants burn down do you like go there and like help out? If a restaurant burned down? Mm -hmm. Um camera's still rolling. And I <laughs> and, and, and I'm stumped with the price of water. <laughs> like, I hope well, a lot doesn't so, burn down. Um, his dad happens to help. He's on. He just went to the East Coast to help with Hurricane um, Sandy. Okay. Um, so maybe you're asking about the um, if there's an emergency here, what happens? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, I think that we would uh, we would participate in any way to help, uh, along with the local fire department and municipality. Very nice.
Just for Buck Slayer. Yeah. But that's cool. That's cool that your dad's doing that. That's very commendable. What's the average four foot price now on your Um. You're gonna fill, fill up with that Um. For here or for the area? For the shopping system. For your Okay, you know, I'll, I'll throw some numbers out there. Every deal is different because a critical part of rent is what needs to go into the space before the tenant moves in. Um, if a space is existing, the rent is usually less than if the space needs to be built out. In addition, there's a triple net cost in the common area maintenance, the tax, and insurance, which usually runs somewhere between seven and eight dollars in the center. So with all those, with all those carve outs. Um, I would say on new space, um, typically coding 20 dollars per square foot. Um, again, it, it depends on various things. But I mean, that, that's if you call me off the sign, that's what it says, um, and, and, and we kind of negotiate that from, from what else your needs are. So, one last question. Of course, your so the owner of the center are they the one that? has asked the people who come around and read the water meter um, so frequently? Have they made that request? Do you know who does that? It, it, would, it would either be the owner of the property management company. It is accepted. How often do you it? Every week. And it's interrupted. Um, you might want to check out, I'm curious, you said that they're willing to uh, we've been talking about that, but um, Black Knight Games was up at the Safeway Center, and they really made it go, and they put every effort into it, and the landlord would not negotiate at all with Dale, Dale's the owner, and so he moved down to uh, Bowles, down in, in Kipling, the old Albertson Center down there, and he said it's half the rate, and he said that he just couldn't afford to keep doing the business, and I'm thinking, that wasn't that long ago, that was like two years ago. And I'm wondering, are, have they really changed their mindset that they're willing to negotiate? Because if it's the same deal, you know, that wasn't flexible on his part, and he's not, he wasn't using much water, so it wasn't about the water, it was about the rate overall. And I'm just curious. And that was in the Safeway Center, you said? Yeah. Okay. Now, the Safeway Center went to foreclosure, as you guys all know. So there were some issues facing that where there was no negotiation happening when it was working through the bank process, as you've seen in the news with home foreclosures. And, you can speak to this much better than I could. So there could have been that, that predated me. And I, I can tell you, yes, it's different now. You won't know until you bring, in, until until someone says I sat down with me and, and I illustrated that it's different. So I'm telling you it is. But again, talk is cheap and just give me the chance and I'll show, you know, we'll, we'll show you that we're fair. I mean, no, no one's going to give space away for free, but this is not 2016. We all and then that, though that was only two years ago, I think that probably dealt with more of the owners over there uh, than, than, than it did with how, how we all approach the retail shoppers in the business right now. So I love him for, for him to move back, move back to Conrad. He's still a guy. He was a big boost for a lot of the teams. He had activities almost every night for like the Boy Scouts, for the schools, for the middle school, he had a bunch of stuff. And they brought in business. He would have brought in a lot of business if they didn't work with him. Yeah. That is one um, hole in our area as far as amenities. Is our, our local teenagers? Um, there are a couple of churches trying to, to help out, but you know, we don't have a bowling alley, we don't have a movie theater, and just um, if you do have any queries from that type of um, owner, respective owner, um, yeah. let's talk because yeah. we can we can share stats with you about Correct. just the need for something for the okay. new. It's good feedback. Two minute warning. Oh, two more minutes. Okay. No, nobody can leave and go. The line's gone. I'm going to do it off stage. <laughs> we, we need more glasses. <laughs> and, any other questions, guys? Um, not only do I invite you to grab one of my cards, but please take. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand them out just so you have them. You can't say and give me one. Awesome. You want one? <laughs> okay. If, if I give you one, you have to call me or email. Oh, you you don't want that to happen. <laughs> I have to put my spam, my spam. <laughs> there you go.
So we're formally over at 7 o'clock, but stick around all night if you want. <laughs> Other than that, if you have any questions, always feel free to call me directly. Um, I'll send you those restrictions that can be distributed to the entire group. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for being here with me tonight. This hopefully won't be the, the last time. Hopefully we can do this again with a, with a bigger crowd and kind of get the reach out. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. As you can tell, Justin's a high energy guy. And I think he really can tell. Justin, thank you so much. My, yeah. my pleasure. Thank you for having me.